Hello all and welcome dear valued participants. In this video, we will take a look at some key best practices for cybersecurity. Let us see what you will learn in this video. After watching it, you will be able to describe what the best practices are and why they can be useful. You will also be able to list several of the practices that are relevant to automotive cybersecurity. Finally, you will be able to explain why the best practices should not be followed blindly and why they are not always the best decision to make. You might ask yourself, why is this video important to me? First, it's always a good idea to educate yourself on the best practices for what you're trying to accomplish, as there may already be some practices in place that will help you do your job better, faster, and more efficiently with fewer problems and errors. Furthermore, it is important to understand that with best practices for the automotive industry, there are methodical ways to support vehicle cybersecurity in addition to cybersecurity controls. Understanding the cybersecurity best practices and principles presented in this video will help you make the most of them and find a way to apply them in a way that benefits the business, the product, and the customers. Let's first discuss what a best practice actually is and why they matter to the automotive industry. In general, a best practice refers to a proven approach, practice, or method for performing a repetitive activity or undertaking in the best possible way. An exhaustive breakdown of every best practice that might be applicable to the vehicle industry would far exceed the scope of this video. Instead, what follows is an overview of some of the most common ones that are expected to help combat rising and future threats facing the connected car. Cybersecurity best practices support the development of secure products and can generally be applied across the entire automotive ecosystem. They also intentionally leave room for flexibility to allow individual implementation and support international application by automotive players. A key cybersecurity best practice generally recommended by ISO SAE 21434 to mitigate cybersecurity risk is the defense in depth approach. The defense in depth approach employs multiple layers of cybersecurity controls to improve the cybersecurity of the vehicle. If an attack can penetrate or bypass one layer, another layer can help contain the attack and maintain protection of critical and sensitive assets. Just as an onion has multiple layers, the security model of an item or component should therefore have multiple layers of protection and their development should revolve around such an approach. The growing connectivity of the entire automotive ecosystem make cybersecurity a complex, multi-layered challenge. Integrated cybersecurity in the automotive industry must encompass not only the vehicle itself, but also its production environment and back end. Ideally, these dimensions should follow a multi-layered cybersecurity approach that includes adapted security measures at all levels. Vehicle security shall range from the hardware security module on the microprocessor of the electronic control units to secure data exchange with the outside world. 
production line security shall range from the IT security of individual plans to the security of global production lines. Back-end security shall range from data on employees' working stations to the entire enterprise network. Only in this way will the automotive industry be able to offer sufficiently secure vehicles and secure mobility services while always complying with the necessary standards and legal requirements. Another recommended best practice is the principle of least privilege. In general, this concept limits users' access rights to what is absolutely necessary to perform their tasks. The less privileged a user account is, the fewer rights are assigned to it. In a vehicle, this would mean that all processes run with the lowest possible permissions and are granted only the minimal access or privileges required for their original purpose and defined function. In cars, for example, this principle can be applied to resource permissions such as central processing unit limits, memory, network, and file system permissions and user rights. Let's look at a simple scenario in which the principle of least privilege is applied. In this case, an attacker gains access to a least privileged ECU. This ECU is part of a virtual network comprising ECUs with the most restricted access and the lowest privilege level within the vehicle. In an attempt to penetrate deeper into the vehicle network to obtain sensitive data and other high-value assets, the attacker exploits the ECU and attempts to access a higher privileged virtual network. However, due to POLP, the compromised ECU lacks the rights to access the higher privileged virtual network. Cybersecurity by design is another important best practice. In many traditional automotive development processes, cybersecurity is considered as a side aspect for design choices and as part of subsequent damage regulation measures. With this approach, however, cybersecurity issues are discovered and resolved from the earliest stage of the product life cycle. Cybersecurity is considered and integrated into the system at every stage, from concept to requirement specification to robust architecture design. This renders cybersecurity as a key aspect of automotive product development, much like quality already is, and leads to a secure system design based on known cybersecurity strategies and tactics. Cybersecurity by design is recommended by ISO SAE 21434 as a part of a proactive attitude towards cybersecurity during development. Defense in depth, the principle of least privilege and cybersecurity by design are a good basis for the development of a secure connected vehicle. Nevertheless, there are several other key cybersecurity principles and best practices you should keep in mind. First, developers should always try to reduce the number of potential entry and attack points as much as possible. For example, by using a gateway as the only communication interface between internal and external components. In addition, services that are not needed should be turned off, default passwords should be changed, and default user roles should be given as few rights as possible 
according to the principle of least privilege. Ensure that secure failover and recovery mechanisms are in place to catch errors caused by unforeseen issues such as update or stream failures. Changes to calibrations and software that have not been thoroughly analyzed and tested should be prohibited. Similarly, vehicle owners should be prevented from intentionally or unintentionally making changes to vehicle systems that could lead to potential vulnerabilities. Avoid complicated architectures, approaches, and algorithms when simpler alternatives are possible. Please remember complexity is the worst enemy of security. Last but not least, protect and restrict access to personally identifiable information and sensitive data wherever possible. Guidance on this can be found, for example, in the Consumer Privacy Principles of the Auto Alliance and Global Automakers. Let's now have a closer look at the benefits of using one or a combination of the best practices presented. For example, applying best practices can save costs, time, and other resources by building on past mistakes, such as overspending or missed deadlines. In addition, several organizations such as the Global Automaker Alliance, Auto ISAC, have already collaborated to develop and test best practices so that their experiences can be leveraged in improving enterprise and vehicle cybersecurity. By focusing on positive business outcomes and efficiently adapting historically valid practices, they can also drive effective business activities that add value to customers and the overall cybersecurity of connected vehicles. However, some existing practices may reveal bad habits disguised as efficiency boosters whose true consequences remain hidden. Therefore, in some cases, it may make more sense to abandon a best practice, even if it seems obvious. This can lead to making the same mistakes over and over again. However, there is also an opportunity to avoid a best practice that is detrimental to innovation or even cybersecurity. For example, because it was established years ago and does not reflect the ever-changing risk landscape of the automotive ecosystem. Ultimately, the following should be considered when deciding whether to use a best practice. The objective of the best practice should always be reviewed to verify its applicability to the use case. If necessary, it should be adapted to the appropriate circumstances of the environment. Cybersecurity best practices are not a substitute for thorough developer training. Rather, they are a supplement to strengthen organizational and vehicular cybersecurity practices. The scope of best practices applied to each project should be manageable. If the meaning of a best practice is not clear, violations will always occur. The bottom line is that the developer should be the primary beneficiary of the best practices. Otherwise, the best practice defeats its purpose and will not be accepted. Let's sum up what we have learned today. First, integrating best practices into the enterprise brings great time and cost savings and benefits such as improved productivity, efficiency, and cybersecurity. Second, there are several best practices 
that guide the development of secure systems and further improve the security and resilience of the automotive ecosystem. And last but not least, questioning and uncovering those best practices can significantly increase competitive advantage, benefiting the business and the vehicle's cybersecurity. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.